Episode 12, the boar bang bears its fangs. Then it's who sleeps. This guy came in with the energy. That fall technique continues to be extremely useful. Just step it on the little girl. What is it with characters in the show and announcing how much fun they're having? Yeah. Yeah, don't step on little girls. I feel like that should be obvious. <laughs> and now we're, we're fighting each other. This is how friendships are formed. If you haven't had a sword battle with your friend, are you even friends? Yeah, they, they look intimidating. Oh, he doesn't just move furniture around. That looks powerful. How do you- I'm amazed that he dodged that. Where is your arrow- your paper that gives you arrows? There's more than one. To see what you did, children, you see what you did, you caused so much trouble by not listening to instructions. Right, there's this unique scent that he alluded to last episode. Oh, he got his hand on the drum. How are you holding up, Zenitsu? I'm so confused, I thought this boy was the one hitting the drum. How many children are there in this house? How would you do that without saying something? It's like my girlfriend. If I enter the room, I have to <clears throat> I have to like stomp into the room or sneeze or something so that she knows I'm there and doesn't get overwhelmed with fright at my existence. This kid has grown up real fast having to take responsibility and be the man of the house right now. It's contagious. Yeah, a little. We should settle down a little bit. Hi. <laughs> a little too late. If only we had like a an item that we could use to fight a demon, like a sword or something. He's fighting the urge to toss the kid to him as bait. As a distraction to delay him. Oh my god. Imagine. <laughs> the power to split a vase. It's very specific, but okay. That's, uh, that's, that's heroic? Is this heroism? Oh. Yeah, search your, search your body for weapons. Maybe you'll find one. Step out of it. <laughs> This could be a life-defining moment right here. So I'm guessing he just hasn't had any fights yet, or hasn't killed any demons yet. Dead. This is that moment of heroism. Oh, he's... He's asleep. <laughs> he and Nezuko will get along really well. Maybe fainting was a tactic. Or a man. Give him a false sense of confidence. I don't know, that snot bubble is pretty convincing though. Pretty real looking. He's sleeping like a fox. Like a fox, I said. There you go. That was amazingly fast. <laughs> Have we done it? Have we worked through the anxiety? Show us them skills. He's got something brewing. That's for damn sure. <laughs> we got all the different elements. Where Tanjiro is water, he's... Oh! I thought it would be cool, I didn't think it would be that cool. Damn. Well, that makes up for a lot of that whining. <laughs> and he kept the snot bubble intact till the very end. That's talent. <laughs> what? What? Huh? Was he unconscious? Was he like sleep fighting? Maybe he's just killed a ton and has no recollection of it. That's an interesting technique. Falling asleep and then sleep fighting. Are we sure this kid's not a demon? His eyes. I'm still suspicious of children all these months later after watching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. <laughs> Anime running technique on point. <laughs> now this guy eats. 
I like how he put self-taught in there. It's important to let everyone know that he did this on his own. What were you expecting, dude? <laughs> you walked towards him with your arms outstretched. No self-awareness whatsoever, this demon. The kick is wholly unnecessary, given that he's been de decapitated, but, you know, it was fun. He's having a great time. Yeah, what is this rare blood business? Oh, he's opening his eyes. Here's the connection to Michael Jackson. It all flows back to Michael Jackson in the end. It's a devil's bargain. Like everything with this guy. He'll give you power, but keep you on a tight leash. You see what you did, kids? You see how much you jeopardized the, <laughs> the mission? Got it. This is the brother they're looking for. I thought he was older for some reason. I'm glad everything worked out for everyone now that we found the older brother. No casualties. Yeah, pretty open and shut case. No, monster came, monster dragged. Monster almost ate. Oh, were those the intruders he was talking about? Now you have the keys to the labyrinth. Sort of. And we can use this to fight back. Hey, Exposition Crow has arrived. Where did he come from? <laughs> that was unnecessary, but I mean, they did ruin everything. They, they made this whole thing really difficult. <laughs> These poor kids. <laughs> Imagine hearing that. He's not doing so hot. I feel like he'll defeat himself if you just leave him alone for a while. He's in a mood. He's already been taken down by life. <laughs> and this time, do what I tell you. <laughs> Please, for God's sakes. He's so supportive, like, at every moment. And the smile on his face. All Might would be so proud. Deku was the wrong choice. <laughs> Where was Tanjiro when you needed him? Pretty cool. He was ready this time. You're about to get very wet. This is so game-like, learning the enemy's attacks. It gets easier once you figure out the pattern. Just sort of smash them. Smashing those drums. There you go, he memorized the sequence. Oh, okay. Nice mid-air jump there. Right, he's still doing this with all those injuries. It's crazy. He can really hold the sword. This is what your training was for. Even that was painful. I'm glad he's addressing this directly. I'm glad he said that. He hasn't really called that much attention to it because he's just a strong dude. But there's such a tremendous weight on his shoulders. Emotionally and physically, and he never complains. I think maybe that's easy to miss in the early episodes just because you sort of expect that from the protagonist, but just putting myself in his shoes, I don't know, I struggle with a lot less. <laughs> and I definitely don't struggle with that with perpetual kindness. And I think it's satisfying in shows when you see these things developed in characters and you can sort of tie a solid reason to why they are the way they are. But honestly, some people are just like that. You know, some people are just born with certain qualities or develop them in their upbringing. And I think to that, effect at least. Tanjiro directly spoke to that, which is the fact that he's been a provider and caretaker for a long time. Not only for his family, but literally his entire village. He's been the head of household, so in my eyes, it seems like he's internalized that as something that he enjoys. I don't think he would be able to stomach that otherwise. I don't think you can 
fake that for this long and put up with this much if it's not really ingrained into the fiber of your your being and your personality he's entered that feedback loop where like good traits are their own reward if that makes sense he's not a phony he is genuinely strong it's just nice to see a little bit of that pain it sort of validates the whole thing and also it's impressive to know that he's been enduring this pain this whole time yet has been so amazing <laughs> And some actual fear. Alright, Bruce Lee. I like that pep talk. Self pep talk. <laughs> Look <laughs> how he thinks about Zenitsu as an example of wavering. When I think about wavering emotionally, I think of my friend Zenitsu. And it makes me want to be better. This is it weird. I feel a little bit of sympathy for this demon. He just seems sort of down in his luck and spirits. He's not ready for Tanjiro. Oh, what? That's it? That was fast. If the demon wasn't having a bad day already, it's about to get a lot worse. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Pep talk continues. <laughs> You've got this. You're going to do a great job sleeping in your box the whole episode. <laughs> what? There's no secret? This episode? What? so robbed imagine having that ability the ability to be at the end of your rope but then looking inside yourself and finding something that you value and letting that kick you back up in the other direction it's a lot harder than it looks but i think that's one of the many rewards you get to harvest from doing things that are good despite being difficult because you have a record of that a ledger of strong moments you have of yourself that you can take stock in when there's nothing else really going on. Some of the things that are the most meaningful to me are the struggles that I've been through and the times where I navigated them without really compromising myself and acted in a generally decent manner. It never felt that way at the time. Like, I don't know. I do think that being a good person and doing your best not to sacrifice ideals can be its own reward, but I feel like a lot of times in the moment, it definitely doesn't feel that way. You feel like a fool if you are holding true to something but not getting the rewards you want for it, you know? It's like, what's the point of being a good person? What's the point of being good if I do what I feel is right and get punished for it? But I also know the feeling of coming out of that and looking back on it in hindsight. And the things I was losing or thought I was losing were not real losses. They just felt like it at the time. They lacked foresight or the full zoomed out perspective. In the times I think I navigated that successfully, I came out with something that was more valuable and more enduring, which was the knowledge that eternally that moment was a moment where I did something that was solid and therefore it is indisputable that I'm capable of that, that I have those traits in me, even if I don't always act that way. I mean, it can even be as simple as just surviving it, getting over emotional pain. That in itself, I think, is a virtue I can lean on when I look at past instances, but also times where I spoke honestly, even though it was risky, times I worked really hard for no guaranteed reward, times when people wronged me, but I reacted with understanding, even when I got burned by those very things. And I also know the reverse, maybe even more significantly, like I know the feeling of getting what I want at a huge personal cost, like getting things deceitfully or mistreating other people for my own gain. The things I gained were so ephemeral and fleeting, but the memory of myself doing those things, committing those injustices, is eternal, or at least will last my whole life, most likely. And I don't know if there are that many things that are of greater or equal value to that, or that we have that much direct influence over. So I love watching moments like that. For Tanjiro, it was digging deep and finding something he knew he could do, which is something he earned by being humble and patient and hardworking enough to learn and practice for two years, splitting that boulder, etc. That's something he did, and so he can do it again, even if he's injured, even if it's challenging. Just like for me, with every new experience and every time I come out satisfied with the way I've performed, I'm emboldened by that to some degree, by the knowledge that it's there and possible. It just takes once, I think, to establish that sort of rung. And from then on, it's sort of a tool you can stand on. Like, yeah, I did that. That was me. Even if you dip below that, you know that it's possible to get there again because you've already been there. It's like emotional or spiritual muscle memory. That is one of the rewards, I think, of that climb to be a better person on a daily basis. So yeah, really satisfying fight. And also the great, great action with Kenji. Ken oh my God, this is going to kill me.